everyone is together. Uh, how wonderful is that? Look, they're, they're all assembled. Uh, everyone seems to be doing pretty fine. And, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Well, yeah, 8-Bit, uh, it is what it is. Um, it's, I'm sure it's something simple, like I just need to reset or I have to go through everything, but I just did not have the time to do so today. Um, with me trying to beat uh, some rain that is coming down now currently with a lawnmower, out and about doing a lot of my normal stuff in the, the game store and uh, normal errands, it was just, it was what it was. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy the cupcake. Whoop. Oh, come on now. There we go. So, uh, let's, uh, let's get into things. Um, I... I, I don't want to right now, Dark Wolf. I, I I saw what you said there. Oh, you, I got to go into my chat so you all can actually talk to me. That's what I was looking to do. Um, it's like I've done this before. Aha! Uh -huh, and here I am. We go. Hopefully. I see you in space. There's uh, a father. Do you hear me? Hello, hello. I, hello. Hi. Okay. I do not see a bar. Oh, you don't you it's don't hear me? That's just on my end. Okay, that's weird. Am I okay? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Oh, all we're right. Just talking about lethality's camera. Is your camera on, Matt? My uh, yeah, you all should be able to see me through roll twenty. I can see myself, I and I can not. see, uh, I can see everyone but you, Dark Wolf. Ah, there you are. There we go. Yay! Yay! We did it, kind of. We exist. Uh, that's all right, everyone. Uh, remember, even if you get a D in school, D stands for diploma. Because <laughs> you can still get one. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're, we're flying Depending along. Depending on where you live. But yes. uh, well, <laughs> we're, we're, oh, we're maybe, maybe not flying along. We're, we're limping along here and, uh, we'll have a good time. Uh, I do want to give, uh, I'm going to give a quick shout out to Gathering of Nerds. Uh, who does uh, Minecraft and other sundry roleplay. I'm going to give a shout out to Coffee Cat Presents, uh, who does the arts uh, and also the vampires. Also the vampires, yep. And let's give a quick shout out to uh, Miss Dark Wolf here, uh, who does the arts and also some miscellaneous uh, RPGs. All of the this is and that's. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know what, while, while I'm here, because 8-Bit Cleric, uh, 8-Bit Cleric reminded me, uh, we're gonna give a, a shout-out as well to an honorary broadcaster here, since we're talking about role-playing games and, uh, vampires and masquerades and such, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, be sure to go check out Sylvanoff, uh, where Sylvanoff and crew, uh, have their, their second season of their uh, Vampire the Masquerade game, Prince William by Night, uh, going. And it's uh, there's been so much put into the production. Uh, I'm, I'm sure y'all will uh, will love it. Um, now, from what I understand, it's probably a mature-rated stream. Not PG-13 like we keep it here, so... <laughs> it is mature. It is. <laughs> I, can, I will personally attest. Uh, Not that we don't imply things that go on here. Yeah. Uh, here, too, just to show you all that, like, I exist, like... Well, uh, I mean, I, I, we stick to a lot of innuendo here, mm -hmm. uh, except during Halloween, I put the mature... Well, and then there was also the death of Celine. We put mature on because that could that was getting kind of intense, but... Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, speaking... Yes. <laughs> speaking of... The death of Selene, and possibly the death of Mordecai. Uh, so where where we had left off, the party has split. Uh, but I, I'm sorry, I'm not rushing through it because I'm being callous to the situation. I'm just I'm I've been running around and getting things set up and doing everything. So uh, I I don't want to I I don't want to uh, 
take a, a ton okay, of time with the setup here. The party is split. Selene and Mordecai have walked into this sort of uh, blue-red fire uh, to supposedly stand before the goddess of death herself. Uh, and that's where they had left off. Oops. And, hey! Laws of gods and men. Thank you very much for the re-up. And for 12 months as well. Uh, wow, it's been a year already, my friend. Uh, and, uh, and by the way, uh, well, because I, I love giving shout-outs to my fellow streamers here. Uh, laws of gods and men. I, not only sounds appropriate for what's going on right now in our story, uh, but is also a streamer. Uh, who is uh, also a Dungeoner and Dragoner. Uh, Laws, uh, thank you for that. And if you want to give a little blip about uh, who you are and what you do, you're absolutely welcome to do so. Um, I know it doesn't feel like a year. Uh, and and now we now we stretch that out for the Tuesday game. You're like, oh yeah, we, we've been playing for what? Like year, year and a half? Maybe two years? <laughs> nope. Going on three? <laughs> yep. August is the third anniversary uh, of this game, y'all. Yeah. The beginning of year four. The um, Chroma Company. Uh, so this is... Uh, uh, who, by the way, uh, we've had a, a party split once before, which led to some very interesting developments. Um, uh, though the, the other half of the party is Norali and Bright, uh, who I will be playing, I guess, tonight. I do have uh, some instructions, and you all can help. Uh, it can help fill in. I guess we can all play as Bright. Um, well, uh, here's a question. Here's a question. It's not that the party split. It's that it split further. <laughs> because remember, there is one person who's not being accounted for here. That okay? That's true. Uh, this is now a, a second. He's dead. <laughs> yeah, he has a he's a big red X through him right there. MIA, he's not dead. He's dead. Let's, let's just admit <laughs> it. <laughs> this is the first step, is admitting there's a problem. We'll have to find out. Won't <laughs> we? Yes, good. Good. Okay, Fluffy, hey, do what you gotta do. Um, and uh, if if I somehow grossly violate uh, one of Bright's tenants, uh, then, uh, Sorry. But oh, no, takes you back, season. No, you you gave some instructions, and I, I'm sure between all of us we can um, we can pilot bright uh, in a direction. Uh, and well, honestly, I mean, like I mean, I, mean, I mean, you know what happens when you when you when you do a gross violation, you receive a gross violation in time. That, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's one <laughs> way to look at it, Fluffy. Uh, it's not so much the party split. It says 60% of the party inexplicably uh, just met met an end. Uh, well, we did uh, that. I, I suppose then, uh, as this might solve at least part of the mystery, uh, or even rewrite history, DuckTales woohoo. Uh, with with the, the split here, um, I don't mind going back and forth. Uh, however, I do want to make sure that in each chunk of time, we are accomplishing something. Uh, revelation, uh, discovery, uh, or, or, or of some other manner, like some, a production of something, uh, escaping or traveling or building or something. Um, so I, I don't want to just say, okay, what are you doing? And then <laughs> I run over to the other one. Okay, what are you doing? Got it. <laughs> And then we come back to, uh, to you all. So, I mean, we have a we normally have at least one break, which could be a traditional split. Uh, but you know, even if we do go back and forth a little bit, would would you all enjoy uh, starting with uh, Bright and Norali, or do we want to begin with uh, whatever the heck is going to happen to Celine and Mordecai? I would say this one impacts Nora, uh, impacts Dark Wolf the most, so it's your, uh, uh, I'll leave your call, uh, Dark Wolf. I'm, I'm gonna your... say, uh, j just so it's not just me, uh, because Fluffy's not feeling too well, we should start with that. We should start with Norlai Bright, so if we finish up, he can go to bed. If he's watching, you know. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's one way to look at it. Okay. Valid. Yep. All right. Let me 
I'm going to bring up Bright's character sheet and whip it over here in case I need to beep boop on some buttons here. Um, yes, now I'm in control of Bright. I finally have control over my game again. <laughs> you can't tell me what to do. No, no. <laughs> Take the power back. It's not yeah, good. This, this, <laughs> um, You're not allowed, Maddie. You're uh, not now, allowed to have control of your game. Now, through this, I, I might call for some roles from either party uh, for for some things. Uh, however, because there's also... This is kind of a downtime-ish. This is kind of downtime. Uh, some of you are floating uh, some fickle god favors. Pardon me. And even if it's not for a particular role, if there's something that you... I don't know. It would be like a little favor to call in or a little consideration uh, such that uh, you you might be able to gain a little bit of a foothold in a situation or sort of smooth out a wrinkle that has occurred. Uh, because I... I, I may not call for any rolls, but you still have these floating, and instead of them dropping off, uh, you might invoke them for, you know, some sort of a little a little consideration, uh, and I'm willing to work with you in that regard. Um, and uh, I have that window open here, got all my books, so let's begin with uh, what is going on. Uh, as I'm going to load in... Oh, that's a really big bright. Um, well, she is... She is... Very present. Okay, now... Uh, let's see. Our ghost is... Not here on the map. Uh, that, we're, that we're talking about. So, bye to there. And we are going to clear the drawings. Uh... The duo of Bright and Celine uh, were able to escape the caverns. Norali? Or I'm sorry, yeah, uh, Norali. I, I'm I'm in such a. Uh, they they were able to escape. Here we'll we'll put this one out. And uh, now you all did. You know there were some things along the way um, that you either had to dodge, which I mean the two of you would be very good at. Um, you know, to avoid uh, avoid a trap of some kind or, you know, some undead. So that hasn't necessarily stopped. Um, but you you still had enough experience going in and out, and, you, and with all your abilities uh, that you had remaining, you were able to get back. Um, now, the, uh, the surface, uh, after you do crawl out, because uh, it, it took you hours to delve down, take you hours to come back. You went down in the morning, uh, and given that this is the fall, I'm going to say that it is uh, it is getting on evening, and it is uh, particularly uh, it is particularly cold, and in fact, um, <laughs> uh, ooh, uh, in, uh, in fact, this is, uh, uh, when you come up, there is howling winds, and uh, there was rain at some point in time, but that is starting to freeze over and turn into snow. Uh, as there is just a, a fierce uh, coastal fall storm uh, that is besetting uh, that is besetting the city. Uh, a couple things that you I, I these are just automatic giveaways here. There is still a uh, there are patrols. That are going around making sure people are indoors uh, and to stay out of the way, um, as uh, there is still supposedly uh, a threat of confrontation by roaming undead or ghosts. Um, that you do not see any buildings on fire that shouldn't have smoke coming from their particular places that smoke should be coming from. Um, there are sky ships. That uh, as as the sky is growing dark, uh, their lights are scanning the streets, or at least providing additional light, uh, going along with patrols. And there's there are lights on in buildings, but 
Not as many as there once were when you all first arrived. Uh, which, honestly, wasn't all that long ago. And that's either because people are hiding, or there's no longer people to go back to those homes to light candles. Uh, or whatever else that is needed. Uh, so, we're, we're going to talk in the immediacy of things, Norali. You know, this is, this is, you have just resurfaced. It is evening, and there is a, uh, a rain that is turning to ice on the streets, that's turning into snow in the air, uh, and super blowy winds, uh, such that, I mean, even, like, the spotlights are, you, you see them sort of, like, wiggling in the sky as they have to correct against it. Um, but you have the lead in this case, um, and, uh, I mean, we have Fluffy in chat, uh, to mm -hmm. say otherwise, but, uh, you have the vocal lead here, so what would you like to do? Well, immediately I'm gonna stop it from raining on me, and right. Okay, and oh our, yeah, that's right, you have a, uh, our, you have a sphere on you. Yeah, and, uh, and our nightmare. Okay. Um, she says, oh, that's convenient, in her bright oh. voice. Um, immediately, uh, just probably try to go back to the vault, the, our word of recall place, so we can rest up and, uh, do some scrying and whatever needs to be done until morning. Okay. Um, all right, so it's get back to your, your safe haven and rest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... What I'm going to do, because we all can get a uh, a chance at being bright, I'm going to roll 3d20 for her portents, and you all can help decide if any of these are needed in a particular way. Now, for her portents, I'm willing to treat those as a much... as like a fickle god's favor, but it can be used for something bigger. Uh, or more dramatic, I should say, instead of just that little marginal, you know, plus one. Um... So if you think one of these numbers should be invoked in a particular way, even if it's not a, a dice roll, then that's fine. So she has a 13, an 8, and a 12 uh, in the immediacy. Now, as we go over time, uh, you know, we're talking, oh, let's talk about what's happening over a week or a month as uh, at some point in time, we hope that we're going to meet Mordecai and Celine, but we don't know when that is. But we can take her unique abilities and the fact that she has uh, these incredible wizardly uh, spells and powers, uh, you know, through divination. She has her crystal ball, etc. Um, and, you know, just include that into what is what is to be done or how things are going to resolve. Um, so anyway, we have some of these uh, to consider here. Um, uh, you do successfully rest. Uh, Norlai and Bright, and beyond, I mean, if there's anything for your character that might weigh uh, heavy on you, such as it would give you, uh, you know, bad dreams or restlessness or whatever, uh, that is for you all to present to me, but I am not visiting you with uh, anything extra in that regard. Um, morning is going to arrive, and I guess you might need to go out and get food. I think there's some there's some food that the uh, that the orphans had left behind in a little cubby as well. It's not as nice as the breakfast Mordecai gave you the day before, but it is something. Uh, ooh, pardon. And my nightmare is now a statue of her. Okay. Uh, is this first day then going back out and exploring the not obvious? Um, yeah. Okay. Probably just... Um, well, before we went to bed, did, um, did Bright have any spell slots left to use scrying or sending? Uh, sending... Uh, what's... Probably, let me see. Sending is third level. Da, 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 da. Spells. Uh, yeah, there are some spell slots left. Um, 
depending on how many, we would want to send to Cypher. Um, Loki, if we can, and then Selene or Mordecai, if we can. They are all uh, unreachable through that spell. And then uh, the same with Scrying. Because she can spy for free. And they cannot be scryed upon. Then Even Loki? The... Yes. Hmm. Then the only other one immediately would be Sally. Uh, Sally can be. Uh, and uh, there, there was there were attempts before to try and scry on Loki, who was also unable to to be scryed upon. And I believe Bright had uh, conjectured that it must be uh, some sort of a baffling magic that can that can block scrying. Uh, however, Selly has no access to such protections or magics, um, and. Uh, she is, uh, she looks like she is, let's see if, if you all are, in that moment, uh, before going to bed, uh, she is resting in a hay pile somewhere. Uh, and is not covered in snow or ice. Um, no other clues on where she is? Just a It's a stable or a barn of some kind. Okay. It's good enough. All right. Uh, so, uh, you wake up in the morning. Um, Bright has apparently some very middling portents. Um, and, uh, you know, who knows what she sees in her dreams? Uh, only she does, at least until it is time to make those dreams realities. And um, makes, it, uh, makes it so. There... Uh, there are notices on uh, various posts and walls around uh, urging caution as uh, it seems like, I, I mean, people want to move. They want to check in on loved ones uh, as well. Uh, it does seem like uh, there was a portion of the city that uh, buildings had collapsed. Not, uh, not necessarily total ruin, like, oh, everything was just turned to dust and blew away, but... Uh, there, there's just a, a, a part of a block of town where there's just a lot of building damage uh, that has been done. And skeletons probably didn't do that. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> uh, you are seeing carriages go by with uh, bodies covered in sheets uh, just throughout the city. Um... And uh, the uh, the patrols themselves. Uh, actually, let me see something real quick. Okay. Um, the the snow for the most part, you know, whatever the the, the flurries that came down last night are melting. Uh, so there's just sort of like slushy puddles and. Um, there's no precipitation, uh, but there, it, there is kind of a wind blowing through that's chilly. Um, uh, it is, uh, it is freer to travel around. Um, the city's urging caution, but it, it cause, uh, it seems like any sort of, uh, charitable assistance, uh, any sort of, uh, military or like, like police or other like civic patrols, 
all of them are are t trying to take care of everything that's happened. Uh, and they're urging people, please don't do things that aren't needed to get yourself in trouble or hurt. Um, cause like, uh, church resources are there. Uh, like there are, uh, there are, uh, acolytes and other administrators of Weejas. Uh, you, you can see that are sort of going around, uh, doing like they're going to some place to do something. So the city is busy again, but it's not lively. However, it's also not unlively. Uh, so you can walk with relative, uh, pardon, uh, relative, uh, ease. Um... Um, uh, I'm going to just ask Fluffy in chat uh, what, what you want to do immediately before I decide. Uh, there, there are some background things, like uh, you talked about scrying, and uh, as we've gone through that, if there are any particular yeah. updates that might be a big clue or relevant, I'll let you know, but that is a background consideration. Um, yeah, I guess immediately, um, we, we did want to try to find, want to... You know, just help people. Uh, so probably find someone that uh, we can donate some money to for relief. Okay. And or just help out with the Mantar. Yeah, well. Because the Nightmare was carrying a bunch of money, and now that money is in a bag on the ground. Yeah. It's in the hall. We can take out a bit at a time. I've been... I've been tracking it on my character sheet, but it is yeah. not on Mordecai's person. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, the, the a trustworthy administrator to oversee the construction of the Orphanarium? Yeah. Um, you have a couple ways to go about this. Uh, that is, uh, you can sort of, you, you're coming out of the woodwork almost literally, and you do have access to wealth, do you want to be up in front? Do you want this to be, oh, hey, uh, Norali and Bright are the, uh, not like the saviors of Oldport per se, but they are, you know, benefactors looking to employ displaced people uh, and to give a home for those who, uh, who need it. Uh, or uh, do you want to be sort of behind the scenes, uh, you know, where you donate through an organization like the, the Church of Weejass? Or you think that the if you whether you like him or not, the empire is actually pretty well organized, and they have a solid uh, a solid uh, understanding of engineering. You could ask, you could fund the Shadahar in some way. You could go to an old port, you know, a Mesomaskin uh, charity or a uh, you know someone in the in the public eye or the private eye. So you have a couple options as to, I guess, who you'd want to affiliate with, if anyone, in order to start this process. Fluffy, um, do you have a preference? Um, Norlai's preference would be finding, like, the town mayor or leader or whatever they have here or uh, going through the shadow heart. Not in, not institutions. Okay. Uh, so it sounds like she wants to 
I mean, she doesn't want to micromanage, but she doesn't want... She doesn't, doesn't want, want to another organization to, to get in the way. Um, probably we can just, like, buy the plot. Then just start building and hiring people. Uh, okay. Um. Uh, so maybe we could go up to, like, Whoever's in charge of the city, tell them, hey, we want to help out people. We're going to buy a plot of land, build a orphanage or something. Sure. Uh, let's see. Finding the city buildings is easy. Getting access to them as randos is not. Mm -hmm. um, but... While you're going around the town, and uh, I, I'm going to imagine this is taking more than a day, because, I, I mean, you, you need to really just look around uh, to keep your ear to the ground, see what opportunities are out there. Um, just as a side note, actually, mm -hmm. Mordecai's parents were in real estate. Yes. I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> But that is a good side note. Uh, uh, Not that we've met your parents yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know Mordecai? How's my little boy doing? You know? Well. They uh, think he's dead. Uh, <laughs> look dead. at the time. Oh, man. Oh, oh man. My sundial is just he telling me it's uh, freckled past the hair. Uh, I better get out of here. <laughs> Literally watched him walk into her arms. <laughs> Just watched him, watched him go. Uh, so I also think he's dead before that, though. So oh, yeah. that. <laughs> so you can give them hope he and then break their heart. Yeah, he totally was. Uh, he totally was alive. <gasps> he is alive. He totally was yeah. alive. <laughs> and then he died. Like and then he came back. And then, he and then he walked into the death dimension. Uh, but Mordecai does actually have uh, not just a foot in the door, uh, but a foot and a tail in the door, uh, if you prefer. Because uh, Mordecai, because he did talk about his parents at least a little bit to you all. And this is like, this is his city. You know, uh, Norali has her city. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Mordecai's stomping grounds. There is someone else that Mordecai had talked about also visiting who may be trustworthy to, to go and see. Pop quiz, do you remember who? I don't think we should be talking to uh, Mordecai's loved ones right now because we're not prepared for the bad news. But Bright can talk to another gnome. Bright can talk to another gnome. Yeah. Um, well, is, right, that's up to you. Is the question? <laughs> What's that? Is he really? Is he really trustworthy, though? Uh, he has a very impressive shop. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, in uh, in doing some research here, uh, he seemed to have weathered things pretty well, uh, as he had uh, he had modified a portion of his store and was just able to sort of. Uh, close the little gantry uh, to his workshop that's just sort of floating above here and uh, just sort of ride things out. Uh, so you are able to locate uh, his uh, his parents' real estate. You're able to locate his uh, former uh, mentor, tinkering mentor, uh, and master of the circus. Uh, you In the city, you know where you can find the uh i guess the main administration of the um of the church of Weejas. you can find the shadahar so these are all options that are open to you but if you want to go more private again there's city hall but in the immediacy they're not taking just walk-in people um what would you uh, you can still wait things out and i am still considering your scrying and doing this stuff in the background pardon 
We should probably try talking to uh, I really don't want to talk to his parents. That doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Yeah, I I agree that maybe Mordecai's parents are not the the best choice right now. Uh, so, um, I think I think Bright's concern would be to get this operation going as soon as possible, uh, because you know construction, especially in in lower tech scenarios, does does take some effort and time. And she wants to get people who might have been you know displaced or, or whatever you know help help get the economy going you know as quickly as possible. So, um, yeah, uh, if, and, and okay, well, you know, another gnome, that's, that's good too. So I, out of character, don't remember his name right now, but I'm sure that Bright would remember it in character. <laughs> his name is Gaspard Broken Gaspard. Branch. That's a long yeah. name. That's, that's a good gnomish name. I'll, I'll definitely accept that. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, sure. I'll just call him Mr. Branch. Uh, visiting his workshop, uh, you you get a little resistance, but he is uh, he is open, and he is selling things. Uh, in fact, he seems to be doing pretty well. Uh, given the fact that he's probably one of the, the few stores, especially a specialty store. Um, do you want to drop Mordecai's name? Uh, probably not first thing. Uh, I would be more interested in uh, actually getting to know him as a gnome because we're critically endangered. All right, getting to know you. That she would take. Okay. So, without revealing you know Mordecai, uh, from him you are getting uh, that he is an accomplished tinkerer. Uh, he has been all around uh, Mesotopia, let alone Mesomasca. Um, I don't know if there's any particular cultural uh, uh, divides that uh, are... I don't know, sort of a, a weird point between the forest gnomes and the rock gnomes of the land. Um, but he is very much uh, he is very much a tinkerer, though he is steeped in magic, uh, as, uh, as he does seem to know what he talks about, but the way he approaches it, like it is with a lot of magic users, is different than the way you practice. Um, and uh, he is going to get pretty well to the point, though, after a little bit of, oh, well, you know, this is who I am, and uh, this is why you can trust me, and this is why we should do business, is what can he do for you? Do you need, uh, do you need magical services? Do you need, uh, uh, do you need, uh, devices to, to help, uh, with whatever losses you have incurred? Uh, he can either make custom ones, or he can provide things that he's already made on a rental basis, or you could just outright purchase them. Um, but he does seem to want to make a deal, uh, and uh, he indicates that if you know in this in this time of need, if you need uh, if you need laborers, I can provide you magic laborers. Well, magic devices do seem appealing, but uh, um, so I mean, he's he's a manufacturer of of constructs. Then is what it sounds like. Yes. Um, yeah, that that's that's probably has some value, although Bright would be more interested in hiring people to go back to work, and would be more interested in him as as an architect possibly or as a foreman rather than as a source of, of labor. And as far as cultural divides, yeah, probably probably some, um, not sharp ones, not hostility, just the the inevitable cultural divides of being on separate ends of the of the continent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So, I mean, he'll probably get in some little, uh, you know, he'll get in some, uh, some little jabs here and there uh, in the course of uh, Gnomish conversation. Uh, Norali, there's probably, there's probably times, because I don't think you learn, you know Gnomish? 
don't know it, but I'm pre- but uh, I definitely know all the bad ones. Okay. Um, I'm hanging out with Bright. <laughs> there's times when th- both of them seem to smile at each other, just big smiles. But man, the air feels really tense or awkward. <laughs> uh, but they laugh. It's a weird kind of laugh, but it's a laugh. Uh, but anyway, there's there's an exchange that goes on, and uh, uh, he is uh, absolutely willing uh, to uh, allow himself to be hired to help with reconstruction efforts, as he would love nothing more than to bring uh, modernity and efficiency to the city of Oldport. Uh, he has studied, uh, he has studied the the Shadahar style of technology he understands it he has made modifications to it that he is very proud of and um uh he even tells you that uh he was able to uh he was even able to help rid the city of undead uh although uh if you ask around no one will tell you it was him because it was it was a little bit of a, a clandestine thing to do, uh, since he didn't want to get in trouble. Um, but he he has plenty of experience doing that, and he would love to help re-engineer uh, the future of Oldport, and uh, and sort of see this as an opportunity to work with as many people as possible to bring about this this new to make Oldport Newport. Well, that that sounds sounds good. Uh, I think a little bit of Shadowhar influence is good because it will keep them from getting too suspicious. Because we do want this to be uh, a thing that attracts only positive attention. Right? We don't want people to be suspicious of this here. Uh, so, yeah, that's that sounds good. But uh, um, we don't want too much. You know, we don't want um, pipes pipes to hell. You know, we, we don't want that. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, he w- uh, now. What I, I'm not going to get into the minutia. I don't want to play an accounting mini game. At least not with what we're trying to do tonight and set things up and you know keep things moving. We can talk numbers like on the side or whatnot. But what he asks for is certainly a large sum it is not more than what you have uh especially considering the extra value like it 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 would work even within the the gold pieces that you have if it was a one for one just gold by weight let alone uh the age of the coins or anything else uh, attached to them so he it is a high amount it is within your budget but if you go with him it will consume a lot of your budget and really, the only big competitors to that would be unless you two wanted to absolutely, like, kit yourselves out with a bunch of items, or you wanted to throw treasure at the big black dragon in the sky, uh, or, I don't know, just dump it into the water and make a wish or something. Because uh, I guess you could do that, too. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that last one. Let's okay. do that. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, I don't mind spending a, a, a decent portion. Yeah, I mean, we we have a lot of money and we, we do need to spend it, but uh, I, I'm not sure how much, when you say a large portion, are you talking like 30% or like 80%? Um, not 80 uh, probably, well, it, it's close. I, I'd say more along the lines of 76%. Hmm. But this is, this is also meaning that he is going to be like, this is not just for his services. Like this is for his materials. This is for the, you know, the infrastructure. This is for him to coordinate labor. Like you're paying him to be a contractor and also a laborer with his unique skills. So it's not just, ah, this, this is my retainer fee. And then we'll talk about my payment. Right. 
Well, that's a, I mean, what do you think, Awu? Um, as long as there, well, it does also depend how much of the project does this cover. Like, can he get everything done and it's 75% of our budget? And then he can act. Well, Go ahead. Uh, there's always things that can happen that can have extra expense. The 76% is going to accomplish a lot, like up front. This is going to be the labor. This is the design. This is going to be him because he has contacts that he can actually go to City Hall and find out who owns the land or the crumbled buildings uh, and uh, and go through these various channels to uh, acquire them. After, you know, a year of construction, I mean, could there be overages? Of course, every project can have overages. But this is going to be a very solid start. And he is fine with conditions like, I want to hire, you know, as many locals as possible to do the labor, you know, or I, and, and this is in particular, you know, if you have, if you have something like, yeah, we're building an orphanarium and he's like, okay, cool. I'll design an orphanarium. Uh, do you want it to have an indoor slide? Do you want it to have, you know, uh, you know, what size cafeteria? You know, looking at you, bright, you know, do you want it to have, like, a secret Heidi magic room that no one will know about except you? It needs to have a whole secret base for Chroma Company in the basement. <laughs> oh, his <laughs> eyes light up at that. Uh, <laughs> and, because, I mean, he he's... Uh, this is something that you and he... Uh, any, any differences you might have aside, this is absolutely something that, uh, that he... Uh, he almost seems more excited to build, if not just to make a secret base. Uh, and the other, the other stuff is cool, but uh, he definitely wants to, to test himself. Like he, he, the vibe he's giving off is that this is a personal test, and you are actually entrusting him to come through on a major project. And this seems to really put wind in his sails. Um, I mean, not that you've known him before, but. Uh, maybe it's just, hey, this is a big up t uptick in business. He landed a huge, uh, you know, like a huge contract in the middle of a pretty downtime or something. But uh, this is for sure making him very excited and happy. Well, I mean, I like that. My concern is that we also need to provide for the operation of this place over the long term, right? For, for, for uh, however long until the world ends, at least. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure if we spend if we spend all of our money on the construction if we'll be able to do that. Uh, yep. Yeah, he well, he can throw out ideas like, well, you're giving the orphans a place to live. If you want to, you know, if you want to send them out to work, then maybe you can uh, harvest a portion of their income as sort of repayment. Uh, you it's can. Not you can provide some sort of other, uh, like, labor. Uh, like, I don't know, you want them to do something? Uh, otherwise, you can make money somehow and, and, uh, and just provide it. Or you can hit up uh, various benefactors and raise money that way because you're giving orphans a place to live. And he, t he his tone is very forward and practical. Um, so... I don't know if it might be grading on you, Norali, especially with your upbringing, where he's just talking about, yeah, you could just have orphans make wooden toys and sell them, and that's how they earn their keep. They can. He's not necessarily being malicious about it, but he's also being just straightforward, uh, throwing his ideas out there. Bright, I don't know if that's refreshing or if that's an irksome part of maybe rock gnome society where it's just, yeah, you know, uh, there's a rock. You break it and you keep moving through. Uh, I don't know what's complicated, whereas maybe the forest gnome is like, no, we can, like, build a path around, it's very aesthetically pleasing, and you could, like, plant a flower on top, and people might stop at the rock and look at it, uh, you know, or whatever, you know, just throwing, throwing ideas out there to try and frame this. Uh, but he tells you, yeah, otherwise you're gonna have to, if you want perpetuity, you're gonna have to ingratiate yourself with other people somehow, 
Uh, I don't know. There, I'm sure there, there's other rich families who are still here. Uh, you could try to do something with uh, the church. You could try and do something with the government if you want uh, to have them. You know, they you should uh, you should petition them. Well, if we're taking care of orphans, you should pay us to take care of them, knowing that we're taking care of them. Uh, so you don't have to. It might be worth uh, you know a little bit uh, less than what you were paying for any sort of care before. Uh, but he, but he's indicating that unless, like, if you want this to to do more than just exist as a building, because he can get you a building and he can get you the labor and he can do a lot of this stuff. Uh, but if you want it to per, to be able to uh, continue on in the future, you're gonna have to do something about that yourselves. Uh, he can point you in the direction of people, but he's not the best at. Uh, he's he's more of a a self go getter. He can talk to people, but mm, he, he kind of leans in. He's like, oh, you know, I'll have you know it. Uh, I, I, I'm quite a showman, but I don't know. Those days might be a little bit behind me. Uh, I was involved with a circus for a while. Yes. So, so, so. I've, I've also had some, some friends who were, who were in the circus. Um... I guess, I mean, this is in character, but it's an out of character statement, if that makes sense. Sure. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm having trouble evaluating how good of a deal this is. Uh, <laughs> without, yeah, thing? like without again going, going and kicking more, uh, you know, kicking more tires. That's a very good statement because there's really nothing to compare it to. Um, all you can really get is that you have someone who's eager to work, is willing to work within a, a budget you have. Um, but yeah, I, if, if you want, I can generate, uh, you know, we can have more time pass, which is presumably fine. Uh, and you can try and negotiate with other parties. Uh, it's just that, you know, here's someone who up front, yeah, I'll work with you. If you got the money, I can do it. I, I can start right now. I mean, I, I, I like him, and I like that we have oh. a personal connection. We haven't really talked about it. I like that he's in Gnome. You know, I like that uh, that he's excited about building the secret features that we will need. But I, I guess I'm having a little bit of sticker shock. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and, and, and as you should. Uh... Um, I, I don't think it would be that hard for us to ingratiate ourselves with the government and or uh, other benefactors. So I think we go for this deal and it's going to take a year to, to build. So during that year, we have time to um, talk to people, you know, and get it going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, again, this is, this is one of those situations where the realities of the game rub up against the realities of the uh, uh, of the uh, of what the in character thing would do because what Bright would actually want to do would be to spend a week just looking around and, and evaluating people right rather than picking the first one that she meets because I mean this is a big enough contract that he's not going to be offended if she wants to say you know I, I need to feel things out first right because it's just so much it's so much money he's he's not going to not going to bulk yeah. <laughs> about it taking a week to make a decision um, but out of character right i, I don't necessarily want to spend mountains of time on that if it, the result is just going to be yeah then everybody else is the same um okay sure norlai are are you all right at least evaluating other options because yeah, he he won't be offended by it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm with Fluffy with not wanting to take too much time in finding our person, though. Well, I, I, you know, we don't want to spend three or in-game months on this, right? We want this to be something a process that takes a, a couple of weeks, but at the same time. Uh, we, we don't want to just take the first the first offer that we're that we're offered 
just because it's the first one that we're offered. <laughs> Uh, okay, so time is going to pass as this is occurring, um, and I will get you. Uh, I'll, I'll get you some feedback in that regard. Uh, as this time is passing, uh, Sally seems to be taking a uh, a coastal road south. Um, in the times that you're able to check in on her, and the others that you try to scry upon are still not able to be located via scry. Uh, scrying does uh, still have uh, now it, it's not as intense uh, when you're scrying on Selly, but uh, in other cases where maybe you are I don't know you're, you're just trying to look around town or you're using your I don't know you're using your uh, crystal ball like <laughs> like Zillow and you're just kind of zooming around the map looking at properties uh, <laughs> you are going to have a uh, there is going to be that sort of uh, web work of peripheral black tendrils. Yeah. Um, so it seems to be uh, intense. Uh, as you're going through this process, it seems to be very intense in populated areas and not as intense in others. Uh, however, the exception, the exception to that seemed to be uh, when you tried to scry on, uh, when you tried to scry before on Jade's parents, that was actually a pretty clear, like, there was nothing really blocking you or getting in your way from doing that. Yeah. Well, we know the, the influence of Shonen Reef settles over the, the scrying magic, uh, and that's possibly why it's hard to scry on things that are, you know, remote. Or in other parts of the world. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm uh, over this over this time that's passing. You're still here. There's no obvious signs of Loki or Grimhilder, uh, although Norali. Uh, a lot of this, I guess, is things that Bright is tending to, as she's the one uh, doing a lot of the. The looking around. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if, if quoting orphanage uh, construction is necessarily a, a thing that Norali is, uh, you know, really comfortable or capable of doing. Uh, what is what's a side project that you'd like to do? Because uh, the the freebie is there's no obvious signs of your brother or Grimhilder. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're not out there because they most likely are. Um, do you uh, just do you want to support? Pets? What's that? What about my pets? They exist. Uh, are we able to locate? Well, we found, we know where Yori is. Uh, yes. Brayson or Mordekluk. Uh, did did you try scrying on them before? Uh, we scried on Mordekluk before and it failed. That's right, <laughs> I did. <laughs> my, my head empty chicken pet passed. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh... <laughs> Uh, for all of you out there in the audience, uh, it was just a very, very horrible die roll on the on behalf of the diviner. Uh, but uh, apparently, just this, this like hey hey from Moana style chicken, just this absolutely derpy chicken, uh, managed to avoid the scrying of a uh, almost epic level divine wizard or diviner. Uh, and Brayson. Uh, uh, Brayson, we have we hadn't had a chance to look. Okay. Uh, Brayson is on a farm somewhere, and uh, Mordecai. Uh, Mordecai is. Let's see, this is over time. He can't... Bright, at some point, will not roll low enough <laughs> such that Mordeclaw can't be uh, scryed upon, so... Um... Mordeclaw uh, seems to be in the... 
uh, in the care of uh, Bright would know her, although you would not, of uh, Miss Crumb. In fact, uh, Mortacluck seems to be like a, a treasured pet of Miss Crumb. Uh, is living oh. quite literally in the lap of luxury. Especially when he's blood eggs. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, uh, Bright would certainly tell Aru the story of Miss Crumb, as she knows it, because she was kind of in that... Uh, outer circle, I guess I would say, of that relationship. But uh, she would tell Norlai everything that she knows that's relevant and, uh, you know, leave that up to Norlai if she wants to do something about it. We'll have to go, we'll have to go uh, get her at some point after we get the construction going. Okay. Um. Okay, uh, quick notes uh, for Bright on uh, kind of kicking uh, like kicking the tires here. If you go through the Church of Weejas, it you could get the most bang for your buck doing it that way. However, the church itself would be the one administering things. Like That's why it's so inexpensive, is you're simply expanding their operations. They already have infrastructure. You're just funding it. They already have contacts and all this. So you could be named as a benefactor. Um, I mean, you might be able to have your jawless skull like put up in a ossuary when you died or something, uh, or you know to have a uh, you know a, a a thank you like a some sort of a little memorial or something for you. But it would be it would be the uh, the ossuary. It would be the the faith that would really be the one building and administering. It's just that you're empowering the faith with your money to do so. Um, but the things that you want to accomplish would be done the cheapest through them because they already have a lot of this stuff and they don't need to buy it or build it a lot like you would need if you just are going through another start. If you go through the city, I, that would be the next cheapest because they have infrastructure or, you know, they can cut costs in various ways because they can simply, like, repossess land that has been, you know, turned to ruin. Um, however, uh, it would probably take longer to build there's red tape and you'd have to maneuver through whatever politics of the city uh, that there are, which could touch on the Shadahar. Uh, though to spring over to the Shadahar, you could donate uh, you could donate a copper or you could donate, you know, 100,000 gold to them. And in doing so, I mean, they'll use it because it's in their interest to want to, to, want to build and integrate here. Um, it's just that if you do so, you will you'll gain allies among the Shadahar, but there's, you know, there's still a, a lukewarm reception even in a more loyal city like Oldport. But of course, news would spread, especially if it's like, oh, the Shadahar are building an orphanage and they're backed by these two. Um, it could be good or bad. Uh, or I, I guess that would depend on what you value or what you'd want to use to try and continue to... Uh, to curry favor or jockey a position among other organizations uh, and then the most expensive because it would be it would be him as the contractor doing things but it, it would be no questions asked he's willing to like build you secret rooms and burn the blueprints like this is it's ultimately uh, I am an individual I'm doing things super custom everything will be built custom you know I'll you know I'll hire I'll hire local people etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, but he's m the most expensive because he is more private and it could be, it, it could be as much or as little that you want your names on things or your stamps on things 
uh, you know, uh, bright. If, if you want a particular interior motif, uh, you could actually get that. Whereas the other three organizations probably would say, no, it's our colors or it's, you know, this standard, it's this standard thing. Um, you know, Norlife, you wanted something, you know, you wanted a fun little crawl space or something. You know, he's not going to ask questions. He'll put one in there. Uh, he might even put one in there without you asking because he's like, yeah, whatever. Kids like this stuff. Um, so, you know, th there there would be, there would, not extravagance, like, oh, yeah, the orphans are going to, you know, drink out of gold uh, cups or anything along those lines. But there, there would be uh, maybe eccentricities or because everything is custom done, um, it, he's also like trying to get it done as quickly as possible, which is going to take more money to do. So yeah. I, I'm open to other options, but those are your four and the general feelings you get about each of the each of the, the levels of them. Well, I only counted three. Are there four? Uh, yeah, it's uh, There's Church City, Shadowhar, uh, Pine. Oh, Gaspar. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Um, uh, or, I, I mean, you could do it literally you yourselves. I'm, I'm sorry to have interrupted. I guess that's a fifth option. You don't get a contractor. Like, you you wait it out. You learn the ropes. You integrate yourself into the city as your own people. So it would take a while, and it would, you know, you'd be using up all your fabricates every day. You'd be, you know, you'd put in sweat equity. You'd be spending your money, hopefully, as wisely as possible. Uh, but it would be, like, that would be the, the biggest time sink would be for you all to do it. And maybe that's what you do want to put your time into because it, it could be a very worthwhile gesture. Um, but that would be, that would take the most involvement from both of you to do. If I want to spend a whole year, I could just build it myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With my level of spells. Because <laughs> that's a spell. Um, uh, for me... Uh, I absolutely don't want to go through the church. Yeah, I agree I'd with that. Um, I'd rather go through the city than the Shadowhar, but I'd also would want it to go faster, so I would say Shadowhar or Gaspar. Yeah, I also agree with that. Um, I don't know. Uh, what do you, what do you think between the two of them? Um, between the two, probably Gaspar. Yeah. Uh, well, you know that what they say it's expensive to be rich. If we if we go with Gaspar, <laughs> yeah. we're on the hook basically for finding more treasure somewhere. Uh, so we'll have to we'll have to do that. But other than that, yeah, I think Gaspar is the best choice. Well, we don't we don't have to like continually fund it ourselves. We can we can get funding through benefactors and the city. This, yeah, yeah, we, we got, we hopefully. Got but, but then we have to do that. We're we're still on the hook somehow. Yeah, but less of a hook. <laughs> <laughs> Smaller hooks. All right, I'm good with Gaspar. Sorry for the detour. Uh, no. That's th these are great questions for the type of uh, thumbprint you want to leave on on the world uh, that you're that you're living in here. All right, so you're you're gonna commit a, a lot of your treasures to Gaspar, um, and he is gonna get the ball rolling as uh, as quickly as he can. Um, now, uh. With you having paid him, um, this does free both of you up. Because, again, you've paid him to manage this. Uh, if you want to contribute even further, like Bright, if you still want to use your your spells to, you know, to save some labor uh, by, you know, creating timber or whatever, or, you know, recycling metal panels out of destroyed ships or something... Yeah, you can do that if you want, but you, you've you bought the time for you two to do other things with this purchase. Um, yeah, I mean, as, usually when we're in town, spell slots are not at a huge premium, so Bright can definitely afford to do some fabricating. Uh, it's, uh, it's 
Uh, it's just that we, we do need that flexibility to leave town whenever we decide to do that. So. Yeah. We, we can we can just travel back and forth and, and check on things occasionally. Okay, I mean, he and he can magically communicate with you all to show you the plans and give you updates, too. Uh, then yeah. what are you going out and doing now that that... Uh, it, it's been a, a couple weeks that seed is planted. You've, you struck the deal. Uh, the, the treasure is ferried over to him. Um. Uh, how, how would, uh, Sally be doing after a few weeks? Uh, Sally is, uh, Sully has reached another city. Uh, she's reached. Uh, she's reached a southern port. Um, my initial wants would be to try to find, try to get Yori and Mordekut back, mm -hmm. uh, and then after that. After trying to get those pads in, Grayson, if we can figure out where exactly he is, would be to probably come back to Old Port and start chatting people up. Uh, there's not really a way to to tell like a particular farm that Grayson's on, but he's alive and is taken care of, so he's not like skin and bones and covered in flies or anything. Um... And as for Mordekluck, that would be uh, that would be up to you. Although uh, there is a uh, there is a wild cherry here in Old Port, uh, but uh, you are, would most likely have to go to a Mask of uh, Horns in order to, I guess, go to the main branch and talk with her. Yeah. Unless we can, unless we can uh, convince someone to send for her, and she can, she can come our way. It's like, hey, we need, we need to talk to your boss. Let's let's arrange something. Can well, she check? if one of you sets the wild cherry on fire here, <laughs> she'll probably have to come down in order to oversee uh, the reconstruction of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> no bias, please. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> it, it kind of is. <laughs> I mean, we we do have the we do have the free time to go to Mask of Horns now. You do. Right is is uh, still struggling with the uh, with the ethical decision to not retroactively change the price in Gaspar's mind. We have an eight for a save. <laughs> uh, no, we won't, we won't do that. But we'll think about it almost every day. Okay, noted. <laughs> you you struggle with the decision to change his mind for him. I mean, on a daily basis. I mean, we could <laughs> we could always just like acquire his money later. After we, that, we we have those options. <laughs> Um, Do we have the money to hmm. hire to hire some traders? Yeah. We we could make a source of income for ourselves by buying some trade ships to go up and down the river. 
You know someone that just recently acquired his own ship. It's true. He did. And he owes us a favor. On account of how we acquired that ship for him. <laughs> he knows how to sail, but might not know much else. So we, we could possibly do that and have a source of income that we could use to help fund the orphanage. Yeah, I, yeah, Brighton is definitely, yeah. uh, definitely willing to invest some of the money in, in business operation. Again, that would be something that we probably don't want to micromanage. But mm -hmm. uh, if we can find uh, a, a business opportunity that looks looks promising to, to put some of the other money into, that would be that would be acceptable. Plus, if we if we own trade ships, uh, we can we can cut some of the cost on getting materials for the orphanage because we can ship them ourselves. That's true. I was actually thinking that if we own trade ships, it becomes relatively straightforward to operate sailing ships to other locations, uh, such as to Candor or possibly even to the Shadowhar homelands someday. Granted, a, a seagoing ship is not the same as a river barge, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, we can work our way up. Yeah, you walk before you run. Maybe we can afford an airship in the future. Are you acquiring a river barge then? That's, that's really more Norlai's side of things, although Bright is supportive. Do you want a river barge, Norlai? Yes, I do want a river barge. Okay. One moment. Dun, dun, dun. We're going to chapter five. Pick up the price of a river barge and yeah, DHB. yeah. <laughs> uh, so stuff like that is here. There's a galley. Oh, a keel boat. There we go. Uh, a keel boat is three thousand gold pieces, which we have just enough for. Aside from any of the treasure, that that's just how much gold pieces we have left. Let's get a field boat. Let's start trading. That's an investment. We're going to make money back from that. with 368 GP. This is a little tight. A little tight. It seems like a, the, like a high price for a boat. Given the we, still also, we still also have a bloodstone, a platinum bracelet, and three Shadowhar chess mm -hmm. sets that we could still sell for money. Mm -hmm. Those have those do not have GP equivalents added to them yet. How much in total did we get of old Shadowhar? Or the, the old coinage? Uh, I, don't I don't remember the numbers I was. gave you. And the VOD's not up so that we 
could go back and look. The VOD <laughs> well, should be on Twitch. Back. Well, on Twitch, but it's not on YouTube. It's Some not. No, I haven't caught up on that, unfortunately. Some of that is older yes. than last session. All of a sudden, the money is getting tight. <laughs> yep. From the void, Ma Mordecai's pocket weeps. <laughs> <laughs> But you could always get those things appraised. Because I don't have GP on them yet. And those would have been in the stuff that the Nightmare was carrying. I'm going to drop back off Discord. I trust, not Norali, but I do trust Awu to spend the money wisely. <laughs> I'll try. Awu has 300 gold in her pocket. She's going to spend it unwisely. <laughs> More animals. I mean, what are the chances I'll find, like, what is it, a jade fly for... For, or is that your uh, for 300 gold <laughs> well there's a magic store uh down down in the the dock district right here uh but uh even if we don't have a fluffy sheep hanging out with us bright is still around to uh account for uh money spent uh so yes uh you uh you are able to uh, you are able to then uh, you make the the down payment all in cash for Gaspar, who's absolutely exasperated and elated um, with uh, with what you've given him, and he asks no questions about uh, the wealth either. Um, assures you that you've done a good job, and he sets about. Uh, <laughs> He says, anytime that you want a progress update, you can stop in or give him a sending. Uh, if you want, you can even request a dream. And uh, he will appear to you in a dream and give you sort of like a big three-dimensional, like a, a tour of the place. Uh, as things are, or like, a, or the list of things that are going on. Um... Uh, okay, well, so then that might be something else as well as to get some magic components. Uh, so that's part of the budget might go there. Now, uh, getting a uh, getting a uh, a keel boat uh, is fine, as you can go up and down the river with it. Um, uh, you, uh, and I, I guess that will then depend on if you want it to. If you want to link the boat to Gaspar and just have him command it to go up and down the river uh, to fetch lumber from upriver uh, or other materials, you can just pass that off to him. And initially, you won't have to worry about uh, expenses uh, aside from just the acquisition of the uh, of the river boat. Because uh, what I can do is just offset the cost of the river boat maintenance and the crew with uh, the money that it could save in supplies if Gaspar can just command it to get particular things. So until the uh, so with the boat and with the orphanage being built, uh, there is no upkeep costs or extra accounting uh, in the grand scheme of things, at least until the orphanarium has been completed. Uh, but that's that's not going to happen for a while. It. Uh, it probably not until the coming summer, and we are we're in about mid November right now. Okay. Uh, with winter, uh, with winter arriving soon, um, do you want to go out, Noraline? Do anything in particular? I I know 
I know some research and things that Bright wants to do. Um, she's going to want to investigate the Sky Shatter Leviathan. Um, and there's, I think, a couple other experiments that she wants to run, uh, maybe figure things out. Uh, but so long as there's not a hiccup in the current plans, what are your upcoming plans for the winter? If you want to travel, if you want to just stay and help, you can just, I don't know, sit around and eat cinnamon muffins by a fire. Um, her, well, her plans would be to contact Salter and see what they can do about Yori. Uh, and then possibly go up to Mask of Forms and see if she can talk to Miss Crumb about Mortiflet. Okay. She has a one-track mind, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> you definitely know how to get a hold of Selter. Um, and Selter is at least neutral towards you, Norali. Um, because you neither killed her nor abandoned her. <laughs> um. Yeah. Let me just fish this out here. Oh, look, there you are. Uh, so, after contacting Selter, uh, you are going to arrange for a place and a time to meet her, since she is not usually welcome in most civilized areas. Um, and uh, sh whoop, you can fly right up to her. Uh, there's the Repentless. Uh, in all its just pulsing, glowing, tattered glory. Um, and you land on the deck, you call out for her, and shadows coalesce crawling across the deck and form into Selter. Hey, Selter. How you doing? Now, what is it that I can do for you, sweet thing? Um, so, uh, a while back, I had lost my pet. It is a snake with feathery wings. He has blue and green and white stripes. And I believe you have him. Ah, uh, I may have seen such a creature in all my travels. Also, I, ha I can locate him, so I know he's on the ship. I can locate him, too, and I know he's on my ship. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what, what would you want for you to give him back to Oh. Sugar, I don't know. You see... That little snake and my snowball get along so famously together. I couldn't let go of one without letting go of the other. And I have a real hard time letting go of things. Well, I can always bring Nori back for playdates. But my brother gave me Nori and I really want him back. Oh, why not you just ask for your brother back? Well, you don't have my brother. Oh, I don't. Oh, I can tell you that. But, uh, well, you know, I'm always willing to help if you can give a girl a reason to. But I suppose if... That little snake does mean something to you. I suppose if you part with something that's meaningful to you, I might be able to call it a trade. I don't suppose you have a, a trinket or something a little flashy for little old me? Um, well, I did come across this. 
I'm gonna offer the platinum bracelet. Well, now. This is a sparkly surprise. And I do love how it shines. That does curl around one's wrist, much like a snake could. Well. Why don't you just wait up here, and I'll go talk with uh, DJ about this arrangement. I'm sure that he would be able to give me a better idea if it's in both our favors to do. Okay. Now, if you need anything, you just ask this little old eyeball here on the railing, okay? Okay. All right. And a little... <laughs> I just raises up out of the railing and looks at you. She dissipates down into the uh, hull of the ship. And here you are on a very cold night. The, the wintry winds, despite it being autumn, uh, rolling past you here on the Repentless. Although, in a comforting, if not maybe mildly disturbing fashion, the Repentless generates warmth. It has flesh. And so it's not as cold to be on board the Repentless as it would if you were just in like a Shadowhar ship. Um, in fact, you even see like like a, a steam coming up out of different like orifices or just off of the the flesh of the ship itself. Uh Especially when uh, when su very cold uh, winds blow past, uh, things glow and creak, um, drip. The eyeball just continues to stare at you. It doesn't have lids, so it's not being rude. It just can't blink. Just Is there anything you back. want? Oh, say good. Say it again. I'm just gonna stare back. Okay, you enter a staring contest with the eyeball. Uh, I, of um, course, lose because I do have to blink. Yes, and unfortunately, do you may not have pupils, but you do have eyelids, and you have the need to, uh, you do have the need to blink. Um, and uh, so after a while of Norlai just sort of, kind of like just bending over and having this staring contest with this, uh, with this eyeball on the railing, uh, you do hear a solid, uh, heavy thuds on the deck. Miss Norlai, DJ states, dressed uh, very Have smartly. Have you been? I have been fantastic. Uh, there are many things going on that I need my particular expertise in appraising. And, well, this one by you was my latest. After talking with Selter and going over things, I believe that it would be a very fair exchange, with an exception. Exception? Well, now this is coming from me, he leans over, uh, as if to whisper. The platinum bracelet itself is very valuable. It's worth quite a bit of moolah. If you do exchange it for this admittedly rare species of snake, there would be, uh, I would call it leftovers. Now, if you let Selter keep that, I'm sure that she would appreciate it. However, if you wanted some money back, I'm sure that I could send you along with some coin to make it more fair. And so I suppose, young miss, it's up to you to decide if you would like for Selter to keep the bracelet. No change expected, but perhaps 
a favor owed, or if you would like some coins in return. Keep the person. Uh, you know, we, we might need a favor from her in the future. So she can just keep it as good for A wise choice, Norlai. Very well. And uh, he... Uh, he has what almost looks like a uh, a covered platter. And... Uh, he it, and it has a uh, it has some string tied around it. I believe then that this is yours. I wouldn't open it up here. There's a hot rock inside to help keep him warm. Thank you. If you don't mind my asking, how are the others? Right's okay. Ah. Right's okay. Yes, I believe that's Miss uh, Chicken Nugget. Mm -hmm. And what about Mordecai? And the uh, professor? Uh, uh, okay. Um, well, Mordecai uh, walked into the welcoming arms of Weejas. And Cypher walked into the welcoming tentacles of Shudder. Why? I don't know. And I'm not sure I'll find out. There's a, uh, a shadow that crosses you as a shadowy creature comes up from the deck behind you. Now, hold on. You mean to tell me that those two just up and vanished like a fart in the wind? Um... I wouldn't say vanish, more like deliberately walked away. Very deliberately. There must be some sort of plan, then. Come on now, sugar, you can tell me. Uh, if there's a plan, I was not informed. Hmm. I mean, Strange. I, yeah, I don't... Like, Cypher's... I think he said he, he knew what he was doing, but I don't think he did. Uh, I, I'm not even sure he's a real professor. Um, and Mordecai, uh, uh, oh, and Selene, actually. Both of them just like, oh, uh, we're going to walk up into the goddess of death's arms. Okay. Selene? Oh, yeah. Well, sorry. Uh, she <laughs> came back, but she wasn't her own body. She stole a body. I think it was already dead, though, if that changes it. So not only do I lose Cypher, Mordecai's gone, and Selene, that piece of sugar honey iced tea, came back too? Yeah, but she also walked into the arms of Vijas, so... Was it painful? I don't... Did she scream? I didn't hear any screaming. But, uh, who knows what happens. How disappointing. What am I gonna do now? Sweet Noel, I, I believe that we were working on some kind of a deal regarding the Leviathan. Well, what are um, we gonna do? Well, she actually, leans in. Uh, she's uh, I, to an outsider. She's probably very menacing looking. I don't know your attitude. Like she hasn't like harmed you, but she's kind of creepy. But but she leans in close and she's kind of like dripping out of her shadowy mouth. Go ahead. Uh, well, uh, Bright's still doing some research on that. 
Um, so we we could uh, we could uh, talk with you about it once she she learns some stuff. And we're still trying to contact Cipher and Mordecai and Celine. So if we hear from them, we'll, we can let you know for sure. Oh. It's been a few weeks, so I don't know. Right, right, right. Well, you do me a in in one of her fingers, just with a it's it's shadowy, but it's still sharp. Sort of like goes like right right under your chin. You do me a favor, Sweetlin. Bright is very valuable to me, especially now that I've gone and lost Cipher, and even to an extent Mordecai. Can you help keep Bright safe for me? I'll try. Because she might be the only one who understands my plight. And believe me, if you get on my good side, sugar, you will reap the rewards. I have wealth to bequeath. I have power and influence to share. But I gotta know that the people I work with are trustworthy. I'm sure you understand. <laughs> Meanwhile, flashback to the last couple weeks. <laughs> uh, no, 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 I get it. Adults do so much talking. I'm really hoping that I can learn something sooner than later. This winter, well, I don't want it to be my... Just another winter in the skies alone and cold. Not able to get the things and the people that I want. And besides, we have the world to save. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's, uh, that's in, in, in the works. Oh, I'm glad. And I'll tell you, Norlai, visit as often as you like. I think that you and I could work together, and I know you want to be on the winning team. This world was made for women like you and me. Well, if I, if I find a free moment, I'll, I'll see if I can step by. Please do. I get ever so grumpy when I'm alone. Well, DJ's here, but he doesn't count now, does he? DJ, you don't count, do you? No, ma'am. There, good boy. Well, I'll, I'll let Frank know how, how you're doing. And maybe I can bring her up to visit. Well, I'll tell you what. I can do one better. DJ, darling. Why don't you just toss yourself over the side of the ship and go down with Norlai? And he stands up and gives a bit of a salute. He begins walking uh, to the side of the ship. Can you fly? If not, I can help you. He throws himself over the side of the ship. Okay. I'm going to fly after him and cast Better Fall on him. <laughs> okay. She watches you two plunge. What a good girl. So loyal. So hard to find good help these days. And the Repentless just continues to drift through the night sky with uh, the steam of just organically generated heat just blowing off of it in the cold, cold, uh, wintry air. Uh, you cast Featherfall and you, you land successfully. Uh, DJ is around for a little bit in the overall narrative, but, I mean, he's there just sort of like, hey, I'm, I'll ask questions. If you want me to do a couple things on your behalf, I can. Uh, but I'm also here on behalf of Selter. Um... But the winter is going to progress. Uh, you will not have DJ for the whole winter. Uh, and uh, what uh, what is a winter goal then? Uh, as the snows are going to fly, 
uh, you know, things will continue to uh, to proceed with the orphanage. Uh, the rivers, I mean, they're as traversable as possible, but there's obviously uh, slowdowns, especially with uh, logs competing with ice, uh, either ice chunks or the river freezing. Um, winter in the city is... And it's winter in the city. It's not as populated as it once was. Uh, there's a weird mix of crushing defeat and optimism. Um, and, I mean, everyone still has a lot of the necessities. Um, but it's it's uh, this begrudging slide to accept more and more that w if the Shadahar had not been here, then this city wouldn't have survived. And now it's coming just into this cultural acceptance that they're here. And maybe to a degree, they're, they're very helpful. And maybe even a necessity if Old Port is to continue on. With DJ here, I do want to get the Shadowhar chess sets evaluated and sold. Okay. Because he's good at that. Yeah, yeah, he can he can evaluate that and the ancient gold pieces and, and the like. Well, we'll yeah. uh, we'll make a, a side note or a coffee if you want to yeah. make a side note about that. We'll we'll play an accounting mini game uh, outside the narration. That's, yeah, that, yeah, but yeah, that's, that's why he's like he's he can he can do that for you. Um. It's, it's no winter. Or it's start. It's like becoming winter. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, Fluffy wanted to, or Bright wanted to start looking for gnomes, just like sending out word that gnomes should make their way to Old Port, but yep. I'm not sure if she still wants to do that, because uh, we, we don't really have a place for them yet. Um, I don't know if she wants to wait for that to be for the uh, orphanage to be finished. Okay. Uh, sure. So you're overwintering. Uh, she's probably scrying and experimenting. Um, mm -hmm. Now through this. Yeah. We are going to. Uh, I need Norlai to roll a d6 for me. Okay. Uh, during... Uh, over the winter, uh, there are members of the faith that approach you, uh, like, uh, very specifically to you, Norlai, mm -hmm. and they ask you if you are willing to to let, uh, if you're willing to let the faith of Weejas, uh, incorporate 
their wealth and their resources into the building of this orphanage. Um, if they want to be benefactors, they can. Um, I, w- I wouldn't want them to slap their name on the building or anything. Uh, some if iconography. Uh, there yeah. would be a little place for prayer. Uh, there would be various uh, uh, decor uh, that would be in place around the orphanage to help make sure that symbols of faith were around, uh, such that the uh, the orphans could be bolstered with their, the loss of their parents uh, and know that there are uh, people out there who are uh, praying for them and uh, can help alleviate their suffering. Um, if, it, if it's not too overt, I would allow, I, I would say it's okay to have, you know, a prayer room and for them to provide material, you know, learning materials. Um, but like nothing on the outside, no, nothing Basically, some someone can't go in and be like, oh, this is a wee jazz built. No. So if, if they wanted to, if it, yeah. Uh, then with a, a quick zoom in uh, on a part mm-hmm. of the conversation here. Yeah. Uh, Miss Norlai, it would seem mm-hmm. that perhaps you are not a woman of great faith, says the man who has approached you with this offer. Um, no, I've never really been one for the church. Um, I do have friends who were very closely involved, but, um, I, it just was never for me. And I, I would want the kids growing up here to, uh, no, they can have the knowledge of it, but I would want to, I didn't, don't want it ingrained. I want it to be something that they can grow up and choose. I see. Well, I get your hesitation uh, regarding elements of the church, as that has always been something that has been contentious even among true believers. But I'm not so much talking about church as it is a faith, my dear. Are you a woman of faith? Leave the ornaments to the side. The symbols, leave the books and the teachings. I'm simply speaking as a man to a woman. Uh, I guess it depends on your definition. Faith is faith. Uh, It's a belief in the things that can't be seen nor heard nor felt. It is, it is something that is more powerful than us, despite it necessitating us. Do you believe in anything, Norlai? Mm. It could come across as... Uh, he, he's not trying to be confrontational. You could take it as like, oh, do you believe in anything? Like, oh, wow, what a loser. Uh, but it's in the context. It might come across that way as a little brusque uh, or not yeah. worded the best. But uh, it, this is uh, an exploration of of you. I, I don't have faith in in higher powers. I have faith in people. People? Well, I suppose you can have a particular faith in them to do the right thing, to be kind, to not hit you with their carriages in the streets. But I was hoping perhaps you would be a woman of 
a broader faith, or a, a, perhaps a deeper faith, than just the superficial elements of life. The fact that you do or don't hold certain pers or particular beliefs is, well, that's not my concern and has no bearing on you accepting this gift of the faith to incorporate elements of it into your project. I had spoken with Gaspard, and he referenced me to talk to you. Uh, he certainly yes. has firm convictions, although I can tell you he is... Well, he more or less believes in what he can see and feel in front of him. So it's perhaps it's a good thing I did get to talk with you. Yes, um... Uh Mm -hmm. I'm I'm certainly not against the faith or people in the faith. It's just it's never worked out for me. Well, maybe one day you can find yourself in a position to test your faith in a truer fashion than the mere process of life. I appreciate you accepting the gifts of the church. They will, uh, they will be passed through your architect to make sure that the plans are revised as the sponsorship allows. And of course we would let our parishioners know that you had accepted the gift that they have given to you through us and that you would wish these poor, dear orphans to find a sense of peace among themselves. Now, if you do require anything further, nor will I, uh, well, please don't hesitate to ask. I can assure you that the faith has access to many more resources than the amount that we've just discussed today. And we would love to make sure that everyone knows that Weejas is with us in all times, good or bad. And she offers her protection of body and soul alike. These are trying times, and perhaps now more than ever, we need faith. Even our brethren from Shadahar though they practice a different flavor of it, can still find a common cause with us here of Mesotopia. But very well. I shall make sure that the gift is sent and that the coffers are filled and the plans are uh, reworked. Have a wonderful day, Norlai. It was a pleasure to you get to well. meet you, and I hope that this won't be the last time. Uh, the the gentle, if not a little gruff, uh, uh, elder tiefling man, uh, dressed mm -hmm. in officiant robes, uh, gives a uh, a courteous goodbye, and uh, shuffles out to the uh, the acolytes or other retainers from the faith that were waiting for him outside of the the room wherever it is that you met him mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so uh, over the winter you have accepted this gift of the faith to incorporate elements of it into the orphanage um okay I'll definitely not let Gaspar know not to let not to give them too much they'll, they'll push for more but no this, this is the agreed upon um, so what he tells you is mm -hmm. that, uh, they're, they would like to have a space for a, uh, a reflecting room, uh, which is, uh, one of the little hexagonal rooms that have different, uh, scenes of, you know, life and death in it so that you can turn to face any of those panels to reflect or pray or cry, etc. And that overall that there is, uh, in, in common areas... Uh, there are uh, various uh, skull motifs to be displayed. Mm. Probably, uh, 
Probably either... Probably either in not so... not so public areas, or to have the skull motifs on the more subtle side. Maybe blend it in with other things, but... Well, I mean, I'll ask him. I'll, I'll see what I could do to modify the plans, but uh, they actually seem to have everything pretty well measured out already. Uh, all of this stuff is pretty well wrote. You go to any Osu area, you're going to find it. Well, this isn't an Osu area. This, this is for kids who just need to, you know, have a good life growing up. I don't want them bombarded by religion. I, I don't mind if it's here. I just don't want it everywhere. Uh, he shrugs and says he'll talk to him and see what he can do, but uh, everything had been pretty well presented. Like, he can he can try and put it in discrete other locations while keeping everything else to the, co uh, to the code that they asked. But uh, now what this is going to do, uh, it will uh, it will influence uh, you know a little bit of the architecture and a little bit of the aesthetic of your orphanage. Uh, however, uh, this is going to uh, as as you're willing to to do this in order. Uh, Sort of as a, uh, as Gaspar calls it, uh, sort of a, a loose uh, catch-all term of um, of goodwill to go along with the actual costs of uh, the iconography and the room to be built. Uh, but he he says that usually this is stuff for, you know, like ah oh, the extra walls or supports. There's stuff that you can throw in there that like yeah it doesn't have to be there, but you can say it does. Uh, but uh, so between the actual architectural cost and the goodwill for installing uh, these fixtures, um, uh, you are going to have uh, two thousand gold pieces uh, returned back to the coffers effectively. Uh, you already paid them up front, and so that's what they paid in for the uh, for the extra work and for the the thank you money uh, for allowing. Uh, for allowing this to happen. Uh, so winter, uh, uh, winter is going to be passing along. Uh, there's um, no, nothing has changed with Brayson. Uh, Selly, uh, as um, Selly has done a lot of growing up, or rather growing old over the winter, um, as uh, she does look to be a lot more mature than when you saw her just a couple months ago. Um, though she is... Uh, she's in Southport. Um, she looks healthy? What's that? She looks healthy? She looks healthy, yeah. She just looks older. Uh, let's see, what are older? some other common stuff that has been going on in the background? Uh, still not able to ping Loki, uh, or Cypher, or Tibba. Um, hmm. Or Mordecai, or Celine. Or Mordecai, or Celine. Or whoever else we're looking for. It'd be up to you if you wanted to do anything further with Mordecluck, but Mordecluck is apparently happy and healthy uh, as the pet of Miss Crumb. Um, I I know Bright wants to do research on the Leviathan. Um, are you happy just continuing to overwinter and just, hey, someone needs to talk, I'll talk, or um, just m making the rounds through the city? Yeah, th throughout the winter, um, probably staying in Old Port, uh, keeping an eye on operations and trying to trying to carouse people, trying to trying to get myself situated. Oh, all right. Who do you want to carouse with? 
Mm-hmm. What what type of people do you want to carouse with? Uh, people people who. So my my goal would be to try to get more benefactors for the orphanage. So mm. working my way up whatever chain I need to gain. Sure. Would you make me a uh, charisma persuasion check, please? Look at that. Norlai. I can be charming when I want to. All right. Over the winter, and we can, uh, again, like, uh, we can keep this off to the side as time still plays out in a narrative fashion. Uh, you are going to end up making three allied contacts of some variety. And I'm, for the most part, I'm willing to let you request what kind of the contact you want each to be. Um... Now, there is going to be a complication to this, and I would like you to give me a D8 roll, please. As you can't make friends without perhaps uh, rubbing some people the wrong way. Yep. Uh, (laughs) Okay. Uh, You tripped and fell during a dance, and people can't stop talking about it. Uh, so apparently you, you were you were attending some kind of a gala, and uh, you were trying to do some upper class carousing, and maybe you tripped over your tail, or you thought you saw someone, or something happened, and you made a bit of a spectacle. You fell. Maybe you knocked into a waiter carrying a plate of hors d'oeuvres. The hors d'oeuvres went flying. Uh, as as someone uh, ended up getting like uh, like cheese squares on them. Uh, ah. And just like, almost like a wild magic, actually maybe it could have even been a wild magic burst happened <laughs> accidentally. Uh, you sneezed or something. And, um, you know, then people just started like talking with bubbles out of their mouth. Like something happened at a gala and you became the center of attention for all of the, the muckety mucks. Um, that people really are sort of on to you that this thing happened. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you made an enemy... Uh, that's actually, I think, almost one of the only ones that don't involve making an enemy. Um, but uh, you have a reputation. Being a little awkward, a little weird, or people need to be cautious around you because apparently, <laughs> apparently, everyone just something happened. <laughs> it was probably a wild magic because I'm good at dance. <laughs> sure, uh, roll a d100 for me. Oh no. <laughs> Which wild magic surge went off when you sneezed? Don't be eight, don't be eight. Four. Four. Uh that uh that's a personal one, reroll. What what was it? For the next minute you can see any invisible creature you have line of sight to. That's not awkward at a gala. Okay. Seven no! Oh there it is! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after almost three years, <coughs> we have a fireball centered on oneself in the middle of a upper of an upper no. muckety muck uh, ball. Uh, so can I wait? Can I use my birthday credit as a reroll? Hmm. I mean, I mean, if she rolls it up a seven or eight, she's basically consigned to the to her fate. Do you wanna? Do you wanna give our Jesus a chance to to give her a blessing? I. I'm just saying, a fireball is much worse than me tripping. I. <laughs> a little. Which a is what the original people. people is. Uh, <laughs> all right. If if you want to use your birthday you... crit for this, then I will, I will let you use, use your my birthday, birthday crit. crit. All right. Uh, then I'll I'll tell you what, as this is your birthday crit, you can choose an effect that does have to affect other people from that table, and that's the awkward thing that would get you 
uh, looked at or just sort of made to feel awkward or have people talking uh, from that point forward. I had a random person. So if you want to roll it randomly, you can. Otherwise, it's on 104 of the player's handbook. And you tell me what happened. Did everyone fart butterflies? Uh, did everyone grow 10 feet tall? Uh, you know, whatever. Uh, you, you let me know. Uh, as, uh, you sneezed and, uh, something happened. Uh, but you did, you did end up making three, uh, three upper class contacts out of this. They might even find the interaction funny. That's why they like you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, what I'm going to do is, on behalf of Bright, uh, she is going to be doing some research. Um, and part of this, uh, there, there will be a monet, uh, there is technically a monetary component, uh, but for what's happening for you, I'm not going to worry about it since you're, you're schmoozing. You're not really, like, you don't have a place to host dinners, so I'm not going to inflict a cost on you because you're sort of going out to other people's places. Um, could could mm -hmm. I turn everyone blue? Sure. Let's turn everyone blue. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Are we talking like Mordecai blue? Uh, electric blue. Electric blue. Oh, all right. So that makes sense. Um, sure. Uh, everyone at the gala turned uh, electric blue uh, for a minute or so. And, uh, that was, that was a thing that people were talking about that. Um. And it was obvious it came from you. Yes. Yes, because I, I sneezed. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, just a wave of blue. Just, <laughs> just yeah. Blue centered on me. <laughs> blue centered on you. <laughs> In a 20 foot radius. Uh, okay, so uh, this would be a question then. Uh, Fluffy, there is a research option, but I can do it through pit fighting if you want. I can find a way to make it work. Um, but the question would come down to, Norlai, since you're holding the purse strings, you can invest gold to give just hard plus ones uh, to this. Um, I mean, in a sense, you can almost buy a... Uh, you could almost buy a, a guaranteed success. Um, so, if you uh, you get a plus one bonus per 100 gold pieces spent, um, knowing that I am so going sure. to I, I'm going to give Bright. Uh, I don't I don't believe that she's a uh, a sage with a researcher skill, um, but uh, but still she's a diviner. So I'm I'm going to give her. A, a little bit easier time on the tables because she can, she can just do a lot of that herself or look through reality for things. But how much in gold would you like to put into this? Um, we have twenty three hundred gold right now. By the way, oh twenty three hundred. Um, mm -hmm. is that after what That's right wanted? Uh, what, component? I have not accounted for any purchases of magical components because that was so not something that bright I have needed 300, I think, for clairvoyance. Yeah, for one clairvoyance use, and I will I will use a fickle god, uh, for bright uh, as well to be an automatic plus one, um, plus a level one scroll. Okay. What's the cost on a level one scroll? Uh, it's it's like fifty to a hundred gold or something. No, common items I think can go up to five hundred. It's like fifty to five hundred. So it's somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, let's do let's just do a hundred and do one plus one for it. Sure. All right. So this is going to be at a plus two, and what I will do is I'll roll at advantage because she can divine a lot of things. So I'm going to roll 2d20, and we are going to add 2 to this. 
Okay, so 15. Okay. So over the winter, she is going to learn uh, two, uh, two relevant pieces of lore regarding the Sky Shatter Leviathan. Uh, Fluffy, uh, I, I mean, if you're going to sleep, you don't have them in particular, but uh, kind of treat this like a speak with dead. I will answer two questions that you have about the Sky Shatter Leviathan with... I, I won't be ambiguous. Like, you actually did research. So this is presuming... I mean, it could be based on conjecture, but you found 10 people, 10 independent people with corroborating stories, and you took the meatiest part of that Venn diagram where all the stories overlapped. So with almost assured reason, uh, I can answer two questions that you have about the Sky Shatter Leviathan as you take time and money over the winter to ask people about it and research. Um... Yep, there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and I have accounted for, for Bright's purchase of clairvoyance. Um, it's used for clairvoyance. I don't know if it's a one-time or if it's permanent, but it's accounted for. Okay, so that is over winter. Um, spring is uh, spring is coming, although it is still cold. Over the course of time, things you do not need to roll to learn is that um, while manual labor has been hired to help build, and the contracts have been going through, the stuff has been has been getting cleared. Uh, Gaspard has uh, a small force of humanoid people made out of metal and wood and artifice. Um, at first, they, they might look like really weirdly like clad knights doing heavy lifting. But uh, you learn that uh, these are actually constructs. These are machines that are here to do heavy lifting uh, to help out. Um, while they do have uh, uh, his particular gnomish aesthetic, uh, you can tell that there is Shadahar, uh, that there is uh, Shadahar inspiration to them, and that they have a piece on their chests that resembles one of the little donut engines on their airships. Uh, in addition, he has uh, he has made, uh, and he uh, he does call those things kyburners. In addition, he has made something for himself that is that he crawls into, and he actually then is a little bit taller than a normal medium sized creature, not quite Goliath stature. Although what's a Goliath? They don't exist here. Um, the Dragonborn stature. Um, but it certainly makes him taller, and it extends his reach, and it, it, it gives him strength. Uh, so it's a, almost a, a like a suit that he puts on that he can control, and he calls the, and he calls that a jack, a, a joint articulated construction kyburner. And he himself is uh, is inside it, and uh, he seems to be controlling it with some sort of a ring that he puts on his head. But you can see that even this uh, gnomish, uh, this gnomish tinkerer, this you know inventor, uh, this artificer is able to, uh, with this jack, pick up debris, help haul a lumber shipment in towards the, uh, towards the construction area, and he seems absolutely like ecstatic uh, that it that he's doing it and it's it's working. I mean, like many times it might be a little awkward. You're like, oh. Has it not worked? He's like, it, it works! It's working! Look at all that we're accomplishing! So, he also, in addition to hiring local labor, seems to have a uh, a team of heavy lifters. It looks like maybe half half a dozen. And he also has this, uh, this custom-made sort of frame that he himself can get inside of. Or, 
uh, I don't know if Bright would take him up, but he says uh, to Bright that she can uh, climb in, and she can give it a try, too, if she's ever wanted to lift up heavy objects without magic. <laughs> I mean, technically with magic, but well, powered by yeah, hand, but <laughs> with whatever gnomish subtlety there is to the the context. Um, <laughs> but by the time uh, spring actually does break, um, the orphanage is under construction. You know, all the permits. There, there's been a couple little red tape snags here and there. Nothing that Gaspard hasn't been able to to get through. Because uh, you've lined his pockets so that he can line others or grease palms or gears as appropriate. And things are getting done. Um, and uh, so with uh, with that underway, I uh, we I, I, I would have had a similar conversation uh, with Bright, although I, I think we got a little synopsis of the of Bright's concept of uh, of faith or belief. Uh, as in chat here, it says, uh, good thing you're not asking Bright, because actually, she would be approached at some point. Are you a woman of faith? Not a bit. I spent a thousand years in hell. I don't need faith. I saw the afterlife and got the t-shirt. Uh, so she <laughs> is, uh, she is rather, uh, indignant or defiant. Maybe not overtly, because it's Bright. Uh, so she'll say it with, you know, like, fluttering eyelashes and a smile. You're like, <laughs> no, dear. Can you go to hell now? Okay, thanks, bye. And, you know, just be absolutely delightful about it while uh, while <laughs> thrashing him. Um, so what we're going to do is it's at least springtime. Let's get up and take a quick break. I, I, I just need to... You know, I'm going to use the restroom real quick, get a drink. I don't need anything to eat. I don't know about you all. But at least if, uh, if coffee and lethality, if you two are good to go after like five minutes, no more than ten... We can come back, and I'd like to pop over to what's happening elsewhere. Um, I'll forget to that. Okay. Mm. So, everyone out there, uh, get up and, and take a quick break. Uh, if you have any bits or subs or anything, uh, give them a look on the break screen, because uh, something cool will happen if you take a look at the center of the screen. And uh, we'll be back in just a little bit here. <laughs> 